we are live with artist Ned Mueller. Ned, welcome to Art School Live. What are you going to do today? I'm going to do a Conti, a Bistre Conti portrait drawing. I do these for myself to sharpen my skills and my judgment. It's uh, you're not doing a full figure or doing a portrait, but it entails the discipline to get a likeness, uh, the freedom to get an expressive portrait. You're not confined by measuring everything, every little inch. So it's, it's work for me and uh, I wanna introduce the students to it and it applies to a whole lot of other things that I'll explain later. All right, so we're going to learn about that in a minute and get a chance to see you. We're also going to see a bunch of Ned's drawings uh, that, that he's done using this method. So let's get the show started. Great. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Our guest today is Ned Mueller, one of the great artists of our time. I'm very honored to have him with us today, and you're going to learn a lot from it. He's going to be teaching you how to use Conte crayons and to essentially uh, do drawings. And I think that'll be very helpful for you. Uh, it'll be helpful for me. I know that. I first met Ned in happenstance. I'll make sure that we talk about that. Uh, but I'll show you some of the, uh, the drawings that he's done. So you can get a feel for what he's going to be doing. And uh, he is an excellent painter, does some incredible drawings, incredible paintings. And of course, he's a fabulous plein air painter, which is where I met him. And again, we'll talk about that. The uh, last time we gave away a prize, which is, um, oh, this is the prize today. I'm sorry. We're going to give away the easel brush clip. Clips on your easel, plein air or studio, keeps your brushes handy. And man, I uh, I lived without mine for a little while because I was working on a piece and I couldn't find it. And then I, I finally found it. It's on my easel now. And man, it sure makes a difference to me. So, so anyway, uh, you can win one of those. The way to win is to leave a comment uh, in the comment section and please tell us where you're from. The winner of the last prize, which is the classic out of print uh, plein air apron. I say out of print because... Uh, we had those made up and we don't have very many left and they're the old logo. Of course, we just redesigned the magazine after many, many years. And uh, so uh, you will have a collector's item if you win, if, 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 well, I guess you're not winning one of those today. I'm sorry. Kimberly Penfield in Southern Nevada has the, the, the prize. I guess I'm a little off game today. We have a free gift for you and that is 97 Incredible Art Secrets, uh, 50 top artists, five hours of content. And you can get it on DVD if you want to pay the shipping, or we will send it to you free digitally. Uh, just go to 97artsecrets.com. And if you want to subscribe to this program, we're trying to get up to 100,000 subscribers. We're very close. I think we're at 92. Uh, we would love it if you go to YouTube and hit the subscribe button. Uh, just go in and search my name, Eric Rhodes, or or Streamline Art or Art School Alive, and you'll find us. And then uh, just hit the subscribe and notice button. And also, if you do don't mind to follow on Instagram or Facebook. That's always helpful. Now we're going to get right back to the man, Ned Mueller. Ned, uh, welcome back. So you're ready to do some teaching. Yeah, yeah. Love to teach, Eric. Let's, Glad to be let's here. Do it. Let's do it. How many years have you been teaching, Ned? Uh, let's see. I started, actually, they had me teaching in art school. That was back in the... Uh, Early 60s, Dark ages? so it's 60 okay. years at least. <laughs> 60 years. So I've acquired, acquired a lot of knowledge, experience, uh, and like to think a little bit of wisdom. Well, I, and we're going to get a little of that today. I was uh, just chatting about how you and I uh, met, and I was thinking about that. I went to an event the Plein Air Painters of America held, and uh, that event was in Old Lyme, Connecticut. And I did a painting with you kind of coaching me and a, and a bunch of others and uh, attended a workshop that you did there. And that was, gosh, that had to be 18, 20 years ago. So yeah. um, you'd only been teaching for 40 years at that time. I guess I need to 
go study with you again so I can learn all your 20 last 20 years of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I love to teach and I people say I'm, I'm good at it. Well, you think, you know, after 60 years, you would would you, be, you better be good at it after 60 years. Well, I'm going to let you go ahead and start teaching and, and you're going to demonstrate, uh, tell everybody the material you're using and tell, show them the crayon and so on. Okay. This is, if I can find where it is in the camera, there it is. This is what I'm using. It's, I've been using it since art school. Uh, it's Bestray Conti. I take a mat knife and I carve it down. You know, get uh, there's a glare on a gl gloss on it. I want to get rid of that. Taper it off, and I use a sandpaper pad here to smooth it off. And then you're ready to go. The only other tool you need, and I'm using smooth newsprint, mainly because I, you know, it's one of the few papers. It's not archival that takes this Bestray Conti so well. It's it's uh, the black Conti doesn't work. It's too greasy. You can't erase it. And, you know, I found this to be the best tool, particularly for portraits, because it's kind of related to a skin tone in a way. So it's user friendly that way. And it's easily erasable. You can smooth it. It's and the papers, uh, mainly I'm doing these, you know, for myself, you know, to sharpen my skills. And sharpening your skills, sharpening your drawing skills improves your judgment. And that applies to a lot of things. And this is what this business is all about, is sharpening our knowledge, sharpening our judgment. And it also sharpens your taste. Uh, years ago, I had dinner with Richard Schmidt and always admired his work because it was so tasteful and wonderfully done. And I said, well, geez, Richard, was your mom an opera singer, your dad a, a violinist or something, or a surgeon? He said, no, I sharpen my judgment and taste through drawing. And so that's, luckily, some of us love to draw. You know, some of us, you know, abhor to avoid it at all costs. But even in getting into abstract modern art, do you find those people that, that have some skills, that can draw well, have good judgment. And that applies to all sorts of work, classical, traditional, impressionistic, modern. So that's why I feel drawing is important. Anyways, I'll get started with this and uh, doing a portrait of this Chinese gentleman that uh, took a painting trip and did a workshop in Ch China some years ago. And it's a good example uh, because it's strong light and shadow. Now I just kind of get a tone down the paper, just just get it down, you know, it's, uh, you know, mess it up a little bit. And one important thing, people always say, oh, well, you know, how do I loosen up? Well, see, I'm just holding the Conti like this and I'm drawing from my shoulder what happens is people get up here like this and they're drawing piece by piece and then things fall apart because they're drawing from your shoulder, you know, I'm arms, arms length away from my drawing or painting or whatever already. So I got a little distance. So I'm gonna just get a general shape of that head. And the more you do this, the more you're gonna get more accurate I know the first time you do this and I'm going to get a little bit more tone. The other thing is a lot of people, uh, it's particularly beginners, uh, they get, they don't get their darks dark enough. If you don't get your darks dark enough, you're forced to use too much white. And if you can see the skin tone on that, it's, it's a number about a number two value. So that really helps to get a, a tone in for the skin tones, you know, and you don't have to stay within the lines. Actually, it's better that we don't. So I get, get that covered. And I've got a pretty good 
pretty good uh, shape already. But what, what you want to do is you want to get something down. So you don't know if you got something right, you know, until until you got it down so you can see whether it's right or wrong. Um, so do that loosely and freely. This, I want to get the hat on him. That hat is important. It explains the shape of that forehead and the top of his head. And so see, I'm just... I'm just Lucy. I'm not concerned about every little thing. I'm just looking for the big rhythm and movement in the hat, so even in the head. Uh, Proportion-wise, uh, you know, you generally, generally speaking, from the top of the head, you know, you can't see it with a hat. The top of the head to the chin, the lines of the eyes is halfway. And these are kind of generic terms, but they're really, really helpful because they're easy to remember. So from the line of the eyes to the chin is the line of the nose. Now that's, these are generic kind of average things, but they're easy to remember. And then from the line of the nose to the chin is the line of the mouth. And I, what I'm looking at, and, and I'm using my judgment, I'm looking at these distances that uh, are they, are they what, are they close to that? Or what I'm doing is using my judgment to find the line of that eyes, the placement of that eye. You know, he's got an extra long nose. This area here is a little bit shorter than half and the chin kind of down here. So I got that in pretty good the first time. And just like anything else, um, if you do a lot of these things or do a lot of anything, you're going to get good at it. So it's just, it's just mostly mileage. So I got that roughed in. Get a little bit. I'm also trying to not just make a portrait, but to kind of compose it. So it's a little more interesting in putting darks and lights in certain areas. So it's just not a, a plain, plain old portrait. So now I got all that tone on there and I'm gonna get in this and I'm more or less just drawing the shadow shape and what I'm, gonna do is I'm mostly gonna, I'm working from large to small. And if you get the shadow shape right on a portrait, you're gonna get a likeness. That theory kind of being if you saw your, one of your friends, you know, down the block um, and it couldn't see any details, but all you could see even on overcast day, you could see the, the darks and lights of their face and you knew it was them because of that. It's the same, same kind of theory in portraits. So those, those big shadow shapes are important because they are totally related to that face. And this is the time too to make make uh, make a judgment adjustments and changes as we go along so i'm just blocking in these big shapes like the side of his nose is not really in shadow it's more of a half tone and the side plane of his head over there is a little darker value. And this is all in shadow. Sometimes you just have to stop to check and double check things. I was a carpenter and it's kind of drawing you know, it's a lot like that. Uh, 
check and double check. Check where his eyebrows are, how far up his forehead. So I got to move that hat up a little bit. Good time to amazing how make. you got such a good likeness so, so quickly. Yeah, and that mainly is because of the shadow shapes are accurate. There's no detail. You know, a lot of people just stop with this, and often we probably should because you know we've captured kind of the essence. But I'm going to carry it a little bit farther. Get a little bit of tone. The other thing is um, we get deceived by values. Uh, you know, you see the light. Remember, I put that value and it looked pretty, pretty dark. But uh, uh, it's a lot darker than you think. If we put a white sheet, let's see, we put something like this the tone of the paper now that's white you know not even oh, even in the picture that highlight on his nose is just about what what we have on this sheet here and so we need to we need to be able to orchestrate all that okay so i'm going to go back in now and get a little bit more darkness in here. I kind of got an overall value. Also time to, you know, good time to work on a few edges. And the hat is nice because it defines the shape of the head. or at least the upper shape, and or even a collar. A collar here shows that the neck is round. You get that to go behind him. See, that shadow shape defines that top plane of his mouth, how it crosses here dips in here rather thinly, and then back into here. The other thing too, with, with experience, uh, I encourage people to try different papers, different things. Everybody's different in what works for them. Papers can really be critical, you know, how smooth are they? Are. Hey, Ned. Yeah. When you're yeah. Uh, painting a portrait, do you draw it out first? Uh, I did. When you're draw painting it out. a portrait, do you draw it out first? Uh, I think that's what I just did. No, when you're painting. Oh, when I'm painting. Yeah. Uh, pretty much the same way, Eric. Yeah. Okay. I'll block it in the big shapes, you know. Um, I won't, but do you draw it? Um, uh, yeah, to me that that's drawing, I guess, I guess I'm misunderstanding what you mean by drawing. Do you draw with a, a crayon or chalk or charcoal or something, uh, before? A, oh, no, a, I see what you're getting at. No, when I'm painting, I use painting a brush of a brush. person or do you draw with yeah, I'll, I'll draw it in with a brush. Use use a, a, a fairly light tone and draw it in with a brush because that's what I'm using. I used to be, it was more lack, lack of confidence. I would draw it in with a Conti or charcoal or a pencil. But I found I'm going to paint it in paint, and so I probably should draw it in with paint. You know, and, I, and, I, and plus using a brush, 
There's an old saying, when you, when you draw, you paint. And that means you're drawing it, but you're painting because you're painting shapes and values. And then when you paint, you draw. When you're painting this eye socket with a dark tone, you got to also be aware of the drawing. Where, where does that socket come across here? Where does the shadow of that eye go there? So you're, so you're, I think, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And see, there's sharp edges and soft edges. And all those add up. But see, I'm, I'm not looking for detail. I'm looking more for shapes, kind of also, you know, thinking of muscles and particularly planes of the head. You know, our light is coming from up above and over here so you can remember that so any any plane like that forehead's pretty light is turned up to the light any plane turned away like underneath the cheek here has gone darker the other thing is i'm going to get that nose a little bit darker this side of the head that is turned away, you know, so it looks often it'll look lighter than this side because it's surrounded by dark. So that's something we have to be aware of. So and working from the photo throws things off. So when I'm working from from um, I've worked from life, you know, for 60 years. And as an illustrator, I've also trained how, how to use a photo. So, you know, I'm doing another class and workshops that cover a lot of that, but it's important, important to get all these values orchestrated. We can see it right now as, you know, because I took the time to get these values a little more accurate. You know, nothing's ever gonna be perfect. And far as two backgrounds, people are always asking about backgrounds. So I, you know, a general rule is that what I'll use is just I'll, I'll get a little dark up here. And that's just, I'm trying to create a work of art too. So I'm trying to get some interesting shapes. I'm trying to uh, make things, some things darker, some things lighter to make it a more better portrait. And I'll employ a little bit of line. So I'm thinking of the whole the whole composition. You know, I don't really want that shadow that dark and reality, it wouldn't be that dark now. So I'm just right now, I'm just going to make it get a shape down there. And it's, if it's getting a little too heavy over here, I can where that shoulder is, you make sure you, See, this is higher than this. You see where that's coming into the chin there. So I could, I could get a little bit of dark in here. And then that get dark down there. And a good time too, maybe to bring out but see, I can use that tone that I put on there. I want to keep my eye up in here. And do I want my, I don't want my eye to get over here. And the other thing with, with uh, 
ears. And we don't have time to go into all the generic ears and everything. But I this is an interesting shape over here, so it's getting a lot of attention. So all I have to do is put a little bit of tone on that. And that there again then gets my eye over here. I'm going to put a little bit of, just a little bit of light, just to gauge my value range. And you know, you just, we just have that kind of abstracted in. We get a light there, light there. And it really starts, Conti's are very easily breakable. Almost yeah. break mine there, I really get frustrated. So you just get a few, a few highlights like that and it kind of becomes magical. But it becomes magical because we got the other big things right. Hey, Ned. Yeah, Eric. Somebody commented that your work looks a lot like Nikolai Feshin. I think you have a, a passion for Russian painting. And uh, didn't you study under a Russian for a while? Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, Sergei Bongard. It's, it's wow. coincidence. You know me too well, Eric. And <laughs> I was just about ready to mention him. One thing he would say, which is, uh, one of my favorite saying is, don't paint the flea before you've painted the dog. <laughs> and I think that's a great comment. It's, uh, But yeah, he, he was a great colorist. I mean, all, all the Russians, they got such great training. Yeah. And I was lucky to get great training. I went to the art center school in... Uh, Los Angeles and all those teachers were working professionals. So we uh, we kind of they they kind of knew what we needed to learn. And even with that, you know, uh, I look back. I wish I would have paid more attention to some of the instructors I had. some nice reflected light and that's where the lighting the lighting gets can get um, deceiving so we you know we have to know when to darken or lighten things the other thing is you know when you're blocking in you know, hit like this, you know, you just block it in like that. But then towards the end, you want to see the little things like that comes in like that and then comes out like that. And this cheekbone kind of squares off there and kind of comes in here. And then I can just soften that. So what I'm saying, even with a hat to block, it's got a little bit of character. You know, often a lot of curves are made up of a series of flat lines. So take advantage of those subtle changes. You know, we're just the shape of that shadow there and how it comes over. Uh, all that is important. Because that, that can take just a so-so drawing and when you pay attention to those little shapes, and I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of jumping the gun here a little bit, but I wanted to talk about that. Because it's important, the shapes of this, 
You know, this ear is flat there, round there, flat there. And it's got a little bit of character. It's better than just having that. And even here, that, that could be flat there, round there, comes out there. And I wanted to comment on that because it can take just an average drawing into a great drawing. Paying attention to those little subtleties. And that takes a while to get to that point. But there again, you go back to getting, to getting these big, big relationships. So I can easily go back and, and correct things. Don't be afraid to take out big, big areas with the with, uh, flat side of your eraser. I got to put a new, got a new eraser out. Uh, this was the old one. I mean, that gets pretty, pretty grimy. I did that just for you, Eric. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Eric, uh, you owe me a dinner or something. I, I, I happily buy you a dinner, Ned. <laughs> you're, you're safe because we hardly ever see each other anymore i know i know well i might just show up in seattle okay i invited you last time i know i have well you know we've been in lockdown oh uh, yeah well you know we're one of the less hardly anybody's wearing a mask anymore because of my autoimmune disease i have to um uh, but yeah, we would go to Wyoming, Montana a few months ago and nobody had a mask, but everybody here was wearing a mask. And so we're one of the least uh, population that is getting the disease because I think that had a lot to do with it. Well, I have to get out there. I just don't know when. Yeah, uh, we're getting some beautiful, today it's supposed to get up to over 90. Oh, lovely. It's been, well, it's been, been that hot here in the Adirondacks. Yeah, that's pretty hot here. And, you know, the yeah. climate change, last seven years, we've been getting better summers in California. Uh, so you're not getting as much rain? Yeah, a couple of years ago, we went 90 straight days without rain. And this, that's unheard of. Well, maybe I'll bring my motor home out. Oh, that's right. You told me you, you, you got one last time. I haven't hardly used it, but um, I'm, I'm anxious to. I just can't get any time off. You know, the, the demands of these shows, I've... I'm trying to figure out how I can uh, uh, get a satellite connection in the RV so I can do the show from the RV. Oh, wow. Wow. That's great. Because what you're doing with these is wonderful, Eric. Uh, you know, and offering these free, I think, is really, really great. Because, you know, so many people just can't afford art school. You know, the high expenses. Well, and the wonderful thing is that a lot of people have picked up drawing and painting who never thought they could because they got the confidence from watching. Yeah, yeah. And then if they want to take it further, you know, we have, we have of course, hundreds of videos and workshops online so people can take it further if they want to. Yeah. All, all professionally produced, unlike these. So I, I think, Ned, I'll take a quick break and then I'll come right back to you. Sound like a plan? It sure does. Don't All leave right. me alone long, Eric. Well, you probably wouldn't hurt to step away anyway. All right, we'll be right back. Our guest today is Ned Mueller and uh, a legend. Uh, what a wonderful guy he is, too. Um, so I just want to touch base on a couple of things. If you've just tuned in, if you want a free video for you, we have samples of some of the hundreds of um, art instruction videos that we've produced. Uh, <clears throat> go to 97artsecrets.com. You can get 
uh, a streaming version for free, or you can get the DVD if you pay the postage. It's got five hours, 50 artists. It's really, really wonderful. Uh, we produce uh, professionally high-level uh, videos. So what you see here are mostly done with artist cell phones and not necessarily professional lighting or sound. It's a whole lot different. When we're in the studio in the sound stage, we have you know excellent videographers. We use the same cameras they use in in Hollywood and uh, same lights, producers, etc. We have it's a whole lot different. So check out our high quality our our art instruction courses at PaintTube.tv, and you can watch them by the way on your app. You can watch them on Roku, Apple TV, et cetera, so you can get the big screen experience. Uh, I want to mention to you that we have, uh, coming up in November, we have Realism Live, which is a four-day uh, conference on realism, and it covers all kinds of realism, and we have a lot of different subjects uh, that and, and faculty that are covered. So the Beginner's Day is on the 19th, and then everything else is the 10th through the 12th. And I'm just going to go through some of the instructors. Uh, the great, uh, probably the finest landscape painter in America, I think everybody would agree with that, Clyde Aspavig. Uh, what a great get and the chance to learn from him. Uh, we have uh, Michelle Dunaway. I was chatting with Michelle by Instagram this morning. We're very excited about having her. Uh, Lisa Egley, fabulous landscape painter. Uh, the great Daniel Graves, uh, founder of the Florence Academy. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity to learn. Alex Kel Kelly. Now, I don't know if he's going to do florals. Uh, we have Michael Mentler, fabulous uh, draftsman. Ned, of course, is going to be on there. And I'll find out a little bit from Ned in a minute what he's going to be teaching. Uh, John Potoshnik, who is a fabulous um, teacher in color. Uh, you, you don't want to miss him. Uh, Leona Shanks, uh, co-founder of the studio in Caminati in Philadelphia. Um, Terry Strickland, uh, Vicki Sullivan. Uh, we have, let's see here, Dustin Van Wechtel, who's, who's a, one of the great wildlife painters, and many, many more to come. So make sure you check it out. It's realismlive.com, and uh, it's all online. You can uh, watch from the safety of your own home. Uh, reminder, you can subscribe to this on uh, YouTube at uh, just search Streamline Art or Art School Live or my name, Eric Rhodes, and be sure to follow me too, please, on Facebook and Instagram. That's helpful. Now we're back to Ned. I see Ned is still drawing. Ned, take it away. Okay, Eric, how much time we got? Uh, well, if we're going to show your other slides, you've got about five or six minutes. Okay. All right. Um, probably a good time. So I'm at the stage where I'm just sharpening it up. But we gotta got to remember you know, how we started out with big, big, pretty much big, simple shapes. You know, working from large to small for the most part, and mostly also dark to light. Um, but now I'm just adding a few highlights. Uh, so I have to tighten up a little bit, not doing so much from my shoulder anymore, but that, um, like I said, a lot of people want to loosen up. And the simple thing, even with your painting, is just, you know, hold your brush arm's length. Um, draw from your shoulder, your body. You know, that lets, you know, I don't want to sound corny, but that lets your, your spirit, your feeling come through. If you're up here tightening up, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I I started out like that, and I learned I put every little detail, every leaf on a tree, and every shingle on a on a house. Uh, and but but I hadn't been exposed to good art, you know. I didn't know how to create it, you know. Um, so that that really really can make a difference. At least it's it's awkward at first, you know. It's it just uh, um, just like anything new, give it a try and you know, don't get discouraged at first. You know, goes back to the little, what the little, uh, the little engine that could, you know, you just 
just keep trying. Don't get discouraged. And I think you've pointed out a couple of very important things. Uh, first off, go to museums, look at paintings all the time, and it will, as Richard Schmidt talked about, refining your taste. Uh, that's one way to refine your taste as well as drawing. Uh, and, and focus on big shapes. Start with big shapes. Like you said, paint the dog before the flea. I like to say bake the cake and then put the icing on. Yeah, that's a good one. Can I use that? Uh, yes, of course. Okay, you can't use my dog one, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyways, um, that's, I'm trying to think of what else I can say. You know, I talked about, you know, using a little bit of line. Um, they're, again, trying to make this kind of a work of art, you know, where I put lights and darks, you know. Put some reflected light. Um, how to be careful reflected light. It always looks looks lighter than what it should be. So I'll take it out with a razor, then rub it in so it doesn't become too destructive or too distracting, sorry. Actually both. You know, uh, somebody told me, my, one of my instructors years ago said, when you're learning to draw fa faces, do not draw people you know, because you, you can't look at them objectively. Yeah, yeah, I, have, I found that out. Uh, one of our best teachers at uh, Art Center was John Legata, was a famous illustrator way back in the 20s and 30s first illustrator and make a million dollars. Any, anyways, he, he um, uh, oh gosh, what was I going to say? Um, he We're was talking about likenesses, people. Yeah. You know. And uh, he was a great artist. Just, he, he was known as a famous, oh, I can't say it. I'm, <laughs> okay. But he just did beautiful women just gorgeous and we he invited us over to his house once and he had a portrait of his his wife in there and it just wasn't the same was i've seen a lot of other portrait artists doing somebody they love it just didn't come off and i've painted drawn drawn karen five or six times and i i've gotten a couple good ones but there's something there, you know, we're even trying too hard. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but it blocks something inside of us. So what I, I think what you're saying is very true. Yeah, I don't even attempt to do that, it, you know, because then I get criticized. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you made my eyes too big or, you know, whatever. So I, I think it's right now, it's just better not to do that as I learn. Yeah. Yeah. How would, uh, here's a question from Kimberly Panfill, who says, how would you do the forehead wrinkles and frown lines between the brows? Lines and shadows? Uh, yeah, just, uh, I was going to get into that. And see, they're pretty dark, so you don't want them to stand out, so you, you can't make them as dark as they look. Just make those darks a little bit, and don't copy them so much, just you know, and put in about half of them because you don't want to ruin a beautiful drawing with all those, those lines. See, that's almost, that's almost enough. And I would, I'd have to go in and fine tune all that, but there again, just let's see the light is hitting there in there there again you don't want a straight line across there you just yeah. kind of want to hit it and that's probably enough all right now ned do you want to get uh we need to get your slides pulled up i'm not sure where they are but uh it's about time to go into that um the question is do you have any helpful tips on self-portraits from lama uh lama deeb um well, I never did any until about a year ago. Really? Yeah. You know, I just never, <laughs> never did any. I probably the only 
port, what I don't consider myself a portrait artist. I'm an artist that does portraits and landscapes and figures, but um, no, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, right. One I did that turned out the best, actually Karen had started it. Hmm. And uh, she was more trained in fine arts and, and stuff. So she, so I just went in and kind of finished it up. And I don't, I don't even know if we have it in the slideshow, but it turned out to be one of my better, act not just a portrait of me, but one of my better portraits. Well, can you ask her to pull up the slideshow? Because I'm not seeing it yet. Okay. We like your studio. It looks really messy. It's an organized mess, we like to call it. <laughs> uh, it's gone, Eric. It was up here. It was gone. Okay. Well, uh, these things happen. So let me just show a couple of things because I do have a couple of images that Ned provided. I, Eric, I can hold some up. Oh, yeah, good. That's even better. Okay, so, here's what this style of each and technique is. There's like a value study for a boat painting. Same technique using the Bistre Conti, just orchestrating the darks and lights. So um, you would use that for, for a studio painting to work out all the things you want to work out? Yeah, yeah. The value studies... Uh, are important. It, it, I'm applying the principles and elements of design using overlaps, uh, tangents, uh, uh, spacing, and all those things, rhythm and movement. That's what I'm doing in the value study, working on design. Like this one here, I used about five or six photos, combined them ah. to put that scene together. And um, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm going to be talking mostly about in Realism Live. Oh, good. Well, what I'd like to just show me real quickly on that, Ned. Just say, show me what came. Don't show me the photos, but show me the different pieces that came from different photos. Oh, you mean on the last one? Yeah. Okay. So the main. I usually find a main figure or something, and that was the woman. She had this beautiful old bag. It was at the um, uh, Camel Fair, famous Camel Fair in Rajasthan, India. So I had her, I took pictures of the tents, found this great white tent with goofy shapes and stuff around, you know, added the little figure behind her. And, and there were horses there also, not only camels, but I felt I needed that little dark over there to fill that void up. And so I put a, just put a horse looking the other way. And then I'll, I'll, I'll have pictures of paraphernalia or if I'm in a market, uh, vegetables, you know, things that I can use for the composition. You know, there again, trying to orchestrate, you know, the darks, the lights and the midtones. It really saves a lot of trouble because you're designing this, you're getting your ideas down. Mainly you can see what's working and isn't. You know, see like over over here, you know, that bag goes over that distant mountain. You know, it could have been a bad tangent. Yeah. You no, know, so that's I'm just looking at this, and it's amazing people want to know about design, but you know, they don't even know what the principles and elements of design are. And they're there to make a painting better if we use them. So that's what I'm going to be talking about with Realism Live. And into more detail. And I, I wanted to do one of these, you know, in the free art school thing, too, because I think it's important. Yeah. So okay. I thought I'd see that down the road. Here's, here's one I just did. You know, had this great photo of some horses. Nice. Ooh. Shadow. And I added. Ooh, I like that. And I added the, the figure from another photo. And I made up, I made up the background. You know, when you and I first met, we painted horses together. Well, yeah. I mean, you were off in the field there. It was all over. And I, 
saw this artist standing out there all by himself, the only artist left. And I thought, well, I better go. He's that dedicated. I better go over and see if I can, you know, give him any good advice. And, yeah, nothing yeah. would have, nothing would help at that stage. I was so bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, you've always had it in your heart. That's, that's, you know, that's the main important thing. You know, if we, people that do this just sheer for the joy, you know, they're yeah. not in it trying to make a living. And I envy them. I'm kind of at that place now because I've, I've done all the thing. I've accomplished everything I pretty much want to. So now I'm just doing things that I love to do. And that's yeah. a nice spot to be. And I don't have to worry about selling or anything. And, only got a few years left anyway, so I'm oh, stop. <laughs> trying to have as much fun as I can. Let me Absolutely. show you one. One more. One more. This, this, yeah, this is just a coastal scene. But oh, that's remember, beautiful. The key is being able to see that. When I'm outside looking around, I'm looking i'm not looking so much as a mountain trees and stuff like that cloud i'm looking for interesting shapes and or something that i i think that i can change and and make it a better you know more work of art so just that seeing and the more you draw the more you do these things the better your eye gets whether you get taking photos or anything else. When I take a photo, I try to make it a work of art. And there again, it takes time to get a good eye. Sure Some does. people are born with it, but you know, and like you say, looking at good art, you know, if you can, you know, Bill Reese told me, say, there's two kinds of art. There's good art and bad art. Well, I, I don't think it's that black and white, but uh, yeah, Look at good art, you know, find out what good art is. And I, I, I'm not going to, my definition of a good drawing or painting, it's an interesting, compelling arrangements of shapes, colors, and edges. That applies to abstract, classical, everything. It's not the best, you could add texture, but, you know, teaching, I have to put things in words. So that's the best I can do. All right. Well, I, I found also that uh, what I liked, what I was drawn to when I first started painting changed dramatically as I painted more. I, my level of sophistication grew, hopefully, and yeah. the things that I was attracted to, I was initially attracted to things that were almost photorealistic and very, very tight. And then at, the more I paint, the more interested I am on the, you know, the broken edges and the interesting brushwork and the just the really abstract design right yeah that's exactly and uh, yeah you've and you've been in a great spot you can i mean you've been able to talk to and see and hang around with some of the best artists in the world i mean it's what a wonderful experience it's been it's been wonderful well ned thank you so much for being on we're looking forward to seeing you and, and what you're going to teach on realism live uh, for those of you who missed that that is uh, four days three days of uh, of uh, content for Realism Live. And then there's an optional fourth day, which is a beginner's day, which we do first to help people get a little bit more comfortable if they're brand new. But you can do this, right? Ed, Ned, they can they can do it. Yeah, that's right. Can I can I throw in my uh, website? Yes. Uh, we we put it in the in the in the comments section, but yes, absolutely. Oh great. Well it's just www.nedmuller.com and I list all my workshops and things like that on it. And you guys need to go take Ned's workshops. I need to do it too. So uh, go do it. <laughs> all right, Eric. Uh, Thank you, well, Ned. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. All right. God bless you, man. All right. Our guest today, Ned Mueller. What a joy to see Conti painting uh, or drawing and uh, something I'm going to do more of. I He's convinced me. Every time I think I've seen everything on this show, something new pops up and it's like, oh, that's a good idea. I should do, I should be doing that. So maybe you should too. We can learn and grow together. 
Well, I wanted to mention one other thing to you. We mentioned Realism Live, which is coming up in November. Uh, a week from today, I'm going to get on an airplane. I'm here in the Adirondacks in upstate New York. I'm going to go fly back to our soundstage in Austin, Texas, where we're hosting our Pastel Live. We've got a huge number of people, and we want you to join us for that. It's really terrific. Even if you're not a pastel painter, you will get so much out of it. You will learn and inform yourself in ways you hadn't thought of. We've got an incredible lineup of, of uh, terrific, some of the top pastel artists in the world, and it's the 18th through 20th. The price goes up on the 14th, which is Sunday, and uh, we have to raise the price at the last minute because of, well, a lot of technical things. But just know that uh, you can still get your tickets if you sign up soon. So go to pastellive.com. A reminder to subscribe to this at YouTube. Uh, just go Streamline Art or Art School Live and you'll find us there. And please uh, hit the subscribe button and also follow on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of the brand new design of Plein Air Magazine. We're very excited about that. It came out really nice. It took a couple of years. And wow, Kelly Kane led the charge on that, our editor, and she just did a great job of her design team. And uh, new logo, new look, fresh, graphic, very graphic heavy. It's really beautiful. And, and I, if you don't have a subscription to it, just go to plenairmagazine.com, get one. You will not regret it. It's a, I, I, have, I, I love it. I'm just very excited about it. Also, find our Connoisseur magazine, which we redesigned a couple of years ago. So anyway, we love having you here. Uh, keep joining us. If you're here for the first time, thank you for being here. Uh, Go and get that free gift at 97artsecrets.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of, I already said that. I don't need to say it. It's just a habit. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.